tax breaks, access to finance, COVID, cash. These are just some of the benefits of formalizing your business. And actually, it's not as difficult as you may think. I'm Kalila Reynolds and this is Money Moves JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's Business Advisory Service. Keep watching to learn more. So I'm joined by Orwell Shaw. He's the director of the MSME division at the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture, and Fisheries, MICAF. Hi, Orwell. Hi, Kalila. Oh, How are you doing this morning? I'm not bad. You, are you working from home? You don't look like you're working from home. <laughs> no, I'm in the office, actually. Okay. And I know right. different companies have different um, policies. Right, right, time. right, right. But we're talking today about formalizing your business, especially as an, as an MSME. You may have been around some businesses for several years and never been formal. What is meant when we refer to formalizing the business anyway? Yes. So formalization in the context of MSME indicates some level of registration with some public authority or some association for which you may be a participant of. So, for example, uh, registration in the formal sense could mean that you are registered with the company's association of Jamaica as a business, you know, with a, with a, with a name. You may also be a farmer and you are part of the uh, the, 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 the farming, uh, the Jamaica Association of Farmers or the Jamaica Agricultural Society. And you register with them and you also register with the Rural Agricultural Development Agency. So that could mean that you are moving towards formalizing your operation. Mm -hmm. And in that context, we mean that you register, you indicate where you operate, you indicate what you do, you may indicate how many persons you employ, and at some point you may indicate what you have to sell. Say you're a farmer. Mm -hmm. You may also be a member of the hairdressers association of jamaica Hold on. before you move on to hairdressers because many people don't realize that farming is actually a business so when you Precisely. talk about small businesses you're not really yeah. not everybody's thinking about farmers but farming is actually a business a business it's a business for sale. yeah right so you right. need to be registered Absolutely. as a farmer too and register as a as a business or a company exactly all right, right. so you're moving on to so you may so may so you may run a small uh, uh, a 40 acre property and you are producing peppers but you're a small business because mm -hmm. you may be generating sales of less than 50 15 million dollars and employ less than five persons but you're also registered with the rural agricultural development uh rather for benefits because then you know once you're a farmer you get certain government assistance mm -hmm. So what about other types of businesses? You were mentioning hairdressers earlier. Right. So hairdressers and the barbers, they are also businesses. They may be micro businesses because they may employ just one or two persons. And, um, you know, they, they generate sales of less than $15 million, which by definition would classify them as micro businesses. Right. So you have to register with your local municipality to get to get a license to operate as a barber or as a hairdresser. So who and that means mm -hmm. go ahead. And that means that you are moving towards formalization. Mm. So who do you register with? In the case of getting a license, you will have to register with a local municipality in your parish for that and also if you are going to establish a business you will have to register with the company's office of jamaica which is also an agency of MICAF, our ministry okay now tell me what are some of the benefits the advantages of actually registering doing this because i can tell you a big reason a lot of people do a lot of businesses don't register is to avoid taxes yes but registration will far outweigh 
the benefits of taxation because to a large extent government is not seeking your participation to be part of the formal economy because they want to tax you no part, part of the sure to a large that? extent <laughs> well no to a large extent of course they want to have data on you to to get a measure of the contribution that you make to economic growth and development, but not necessarily for taxation purposes. Because, you know, part of the reason why we are not having the quality data that we want on the MSME sector is for the very same reason that they are afraid to come forward to participate in the formal economy because they feel there's this perception that the government is about to tax it. But mm -hmm. that's not all. It is not the primary reason. What we want to do is to capture data on the businesses in Jamaica, whether they are formal or, they, or informal. Mm -hmm. So, and we can talk a bit more to, about we can talk a bit more about taxation in a few because I know there have been some measures to ease the tax burden on MSMEs, particularly in the past budget. But give me now right. some, of the, some of the benefits of formalization. Right. You say the benefits outweigh the taxation. Tell me how. Absolutely, because if you are formal, there is a higher propensity for you to be competitive and internationalize your operation by forging collaboration with local and overseas partners to expand your business. Most of the partners that are available where you can match your business with are requiring that you formalize you. They want to see something about you in a formal way before they can engage in business with you. And by formalizing that arrangement, you stand to benefit significantly from expanding your business and your operation and also to receive low-cost capital to um, to um, benefit from some kind of assistance through multilateral and bilateral agencies because they do offer financing and other support to MSMEs, but they have to register their operation. In other words, they have to formalize their operations. Mm. Also, tell me some other types you of. You can ben Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Oral. So you can also benefit from training interventions. You can also benefit from incubation services if you are formal. You can also benefit from government assistance, some of the ones that the government are offering now. There is a tax credit of $375,000. Mm -hmm. There is a small business grant of $100,000. Uh, but of course, you have to show some form of registration, whether or not that is with the RADA, the Rural Agricultural Development Agency, the Jamaica Association, uh, the JAS, or, or the, the Air Justice Association of Jamaica for you to benefit from those offerings. Yeah, so those were some of the ones that I was just about to, to ask you about. So you have some right. specific programs that are offered. You can get, you said, COVID money under the government's care program, you can get tax right. relief. Tell me about the tax relief that's offered to MSMEs. Right, so um, as part of the process of getting people, you know, from moving from informality to formality, we had made some recommendations to, to the Ministry of Finance in terms of some of the propositions that they could consider to increase the participation rate into the formal sector. Uh, one of them was um, the abolishment of the minimum business tax, which you know is a measure that was um, implemented last year. And this is uh, the total abolishment of the minimum tax of $60,000 if you are a registered entity to pay um, so that has been abolished, and that has been abolished since last year. The government this year has also put forward a tax credit of $375,000 for 
uh, where, that MSMEs can utilize, can benefit from if they are registered. What that means is that if you pay taxes to the government um, because you're a registered business and because you generate income of over $10 million, that $375,000 can be used to offset taxes that you may pay over to the government. Mm. So it is, it is a benefit. Remember that MSMEs only pay taxes for over $10 million in turnover. Mm. Currently, they don't pay for under up to $10 million. So there is a threshold. So there is a threshold. OK. All right. And, so and, and that's significant, eh? Yes, it is business. actually. It, right. it's, it's quite significant. So you've outlined some other benefits of formalizing. formalizing. You've told us why it's important. You've told us what formalizing is. Now, if anybody's watching this and they're now convinced, okay, wow, this sounds good. I need to formalize. How do they do it though? Because one of the complaints over the years has been that there's so much bureaucracy involved in the process here in Jamaica is just too difficult to formalize. So lots of people just can't bother. Well, you know, Kalila, um, since 2010 and up to 2017, the government has made the reformation of the business environment a major priority to increase the formalization of businesses. Over 27 reform measures have been implemented over that period with a view to increasing the participation rate uh, of businesses into the formal sector. And these ranges from making it much easier, using electronic means for registration, making filing of taxes easier, making the form simpler for registering with the company's office. I mean, the form was like about 10 pages. It is far less than that now. It may be a two or a three page form that you'd have to complete for that process. The government has also moved towards efficiency measures in place where, where you can actually do your registration online rather than coming into the company's office to do that process. So there are several measures that have been implemented to make it easier and far more efficient to do that registration process. So there is no need to, to have this pushback that the process is very bureaucratic and there are many steps in the process. Mm -hmm. This has been significantly reduced over the last couple of years to facilitate the involvement of more businesses into the formal sector. And I can tell the viewers that it's completely online, at least registering the business right. name is online. You can do it through the company's Office of Jamaica website. Just type that in Google. It will pop right up. Yes. And you can register your business right. name for free for 30 days. And you have that 30 day process, exactly. that 30 day time period to get the, the filing of the documents completed and so on while you have the, the business name registered. It's really not that difficult of a process. I've been going through it myself, Oral. Yes, yes. And, and if you wish, you know, I can send you, uh, you know, all the 27 measures that the government would have implemented over the last couple of years to make it easier for people to to, to, to make the registration process more efficient and effective. So there is no need for people not want to register their business. They, they are, so, so, they are, so when you look at it overall, based on what we are discussing, the benefits far outweigh whatever taxes you may pay. Because remember, again, you know, as we had said earlier, you don't pay taxes up to $10 million in sales, mm -hmm. right? So if you are a small farmer, and you currently operate a farm with five or six acres, which is what most of the small farmers will do. And you do a cash crop, say, planting four acres of that in peppers, another four acres in Irish potato, and say another two acres in sweet potato. And say that crop has a turnaround time of, say, four or five months for reaping. 
And, you know, I just spoke with a small farmer recently and he was just telling me the kind of returns he generates for a typical farm size of that, uh, of, uh, of 10 acres. And you generate, I, I think he says about $1.7 million in sales from, from that 10 acre, four in peppers, four in sweet potato, and another, four in Irish potato, and another two in sweet, in sweet potato. And you do that, well, you can only do that for about two or three times for the year, right? Given the, ter given the turns, right? Mm -hmm. That is equivalent to less than $5 million in sales. And you are not taxed, even if you are registered. But yet you can benefit from a lot of government assistance. Mm. And that's just a 10 acre. Now, if you multiply that by 10 to 20 acres, you would be still less than the $10 million threshold in terms of sales. I see. You, you see where I'm going? Yeah. So there, there are significant benefits in, in formalization. And remember now, say you move over into a 40 acre property and you do save 40 acres of that in peppers. And you are going to sell all of that peppers, that pepper to Grace Kennedy, crushed, right? for their processing you may very well generate 14 million dollars in sales from that and that still defines you as a small business but how much you think you're going to pay in taxes from that remember you know 10 million of that would be tax free so mm -hmm. all you'd be paying is just about four million dollars you're gonna be paying just so what balance. benefits are you going to get from that the government give you free pesticides they give you technical support through their um through these guys who go out and look at your farms and to make sure that your farming operations are operating efficiently and effectively right they give you irrigation services free yes mm -hmm. they give you free fertilizers they give you technical support and assistance as well you when you monetize these it is far more than what you would pay as a percentage of the, 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 the extra $4 million above and beyond the $10 million that you have generated. And that's only in the agriculture industry because and in that's other just industries, in the there, agriculture are other there are other incentives right. so, in other industries. So if you look at all the sectors across, and this could be services where you, you, know, you may be offering um, computer services, IT services, or consulting services, it's the same. And you can benefit from a range of assistance through the Development Bank of Jamaica, where you can get low, low cost loans, right? Through the Exim Bank. Through Exim Bank, other, yes. Right. And also through, importantly, through the Jamaica Development, uh, Jamaica Business Development Corporation, which is also another agency of MICAF that is involved in capacity building and assisting your operation to scale from micro to small to medium enterprise, and also assist you with your product design, business plan development, project, um, product preparation, and also collaboration with international buyers, and also put you on to financiers where you can see joint venture arrangements through um, joint venture capitalists, where you can go and partner with overseas firms who may be buying your products and, and selling them online. Most of our products, most of our MSMEs have products on Amazon, you know, and, uh, and wow. eBay. Really? Currently, we have a program working with the that? OAS and, an, a, and a major company overseas where we are trying to internationalize over 25,000 MSMEs with it by 2022. And this is really to bring MSMEs to sell their products online. And these are not registered MSMEs. It could be informal as well. So we're just trying to make people, we're just trying to internationalize their operations through this means. You know, Oral, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, if you are content with being small, can stay in your small corner, but if you really want to grow your business, if you want to take it to the next level, they really, people really ought to be reaching out to you there at the ministry, reaching out to these agencies of the government, 
and also importantly formalizing that business because if you don't formalize you never get to take your business to the next level can't scale up you can't scale up exactly challenging to scale up right so you're absolutely yeah. right about that right i mean we are now contemplating looking at um providing um low-cost loans to msmes uh, you know something less than five percent but for you to access that kind of affordable financing mechanism you have to formalize your operations and you have you have to operate in the real sector we're not talking about people who go to brazil and buy brazilian here and come back and sell it we are talking about businesses that are involved in production productive activities. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of people that can drive economic growth and development. Wonderful. So these are some of the things that can, can come as a result of formalization and we are encourage our MSMEs to move. They, 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 they are it's evidence really that they are moving, you know. It's a really important message there, Oral. It's a really important message that, that we yes. can't emphasize enough. Yeah. When, when you look at it, the, 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 starting just recently in 2018 published their report on the jamaica survey of establishments uh, these are businesses eh? mm -hmm. and they have done a sample of approximately 38,000 businesses right across jamaica really the herbal centers and we are very um very enlightening and very delighted that from that survey which is still a small survey, but it is representative of what we feel the small business sector is in Jamaica. 82% of those businesses have registered with some with the, with the company's office of Jamaica. 82% of them, of the 36,000 that were interviewed in that survey. That must so be this a is, huge jump. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a move in the right direction. I recall seeing previous surveys where it's a very small amount, something like 30 odd percent that had registered. So that's that's really great. Precisely. Precisely. Right. So that sample load is coming out with 82 percent. So that that's a move in the right direction. And people are listening to the cause for formalization and the benefits that they can derive from being formalized. Thanks for talking to me, Oral. Appreciate it. Thanks very much for listening, Khalil, and get the message out to our MSMEs. All right, good Thank stuff. Thank you. Through your very good program. All right, good. That's it for this episode of Money Moves JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's Business Advisory Service. Check out their website, eximbankja.com. I'm Khalila Reynolds. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and share with a friend. Stay safe.